Hello, everybody, and welcome in to Blue Jays Today, guys. First Blue Jays Today show of the official 2024 MLB season. Coming off of a series split with those Tampa Bay Rays. Ups, downs, highs, lows, things that you love, things that you like, things that were terrible. Game two, game three, I'm looking at you. Mm -hmm. We're going to break all of that down, as well as looking at some recent Toronto Blue Jays updates, this upcoming series. We're going to talk about so much Toronto Blue mm -hmm. Jays news and content in this one. I'm your host, Nicholas Playlock. And I'm your host, Adam Peddle. And yes, guys, this is that first Blue Jays Today show during the regular season. This is what we've been dreaming to do with y'all right here. 12 o'clock on a Monday. Mm -hmm. We got lots of time before first pitch tonight against the Houston Astros at 8 o'clock. But before then, like Nick said, yeah. A lot of very interesting things to pull away from that series. You've got great performances, not so great performances, and a little bit of injury concern. And that's where we're going to start today. If you guys are watching this on YouTube or listening on the podcast platforms, we have a little bit of an injury concern. No Bo Bichette in the game yesterday, but it didn't really matter in the Blue Jays in the end of it because right. they did pull out the series split. But still, it's not good to see that you're a star is a little bit hurt. Yeah, of course not. Uh, what we're referring to, guys, is the uh, neck spasms that he was dealing with. Shout out to Hazel May, who tweeted this out yesterday. Uh, he was a late scratch, everybody. We thought that he was going to be in the lineup then, you know, a couple minutes prior to that. No, he wasn't. And it was going to be Ernie Clement, who we are going to be talking about later in this show, so stay tuned for that. Um, necks are worrying just because, I mean, you kind of need that thing. It is important, especially yeah. when you're swinging at full force and your thing and your neck is rotating around. So that's obviously like mildly concerning. However, the guy was in, uh, like he was in in the dugout, like he was there with all the guys. Uh, he looked a little bit, yeah, uh, like awkward. I, I, I was know. about to say that yeah. Buck Martinez kind of called it on the broadcast that Bo Bichette was kind of just sitting, uh, you know, standing there with his neck tight. Like he really, when people were talking to him with the right and left of him, he would just like use his eyes to kind of check. Yeah. I mean, obviously he's probably being precautionary. But it's still kind of, you know, a little concerning. We don't know anything. We're reading, maybe we're reading too much into it. Well, I, okay, let's face it. If the guy got scratched, then he means that, yeah, he's probably dealing, it's like, it's not yeah. that he's feeling nothing. I mean, right, it's, no, right. he's feeling something. Right. So he's probably trying to take care of his neck. I'm not overly concerned at this point. I think that, you know, there would be cause for concern if you see him out today and out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that's the game plan. I feel like based on the way that they were talking about it on, on the broadcast and just like, Hazel May coming in and everybody that was bringing this up, it sounded like it was, you know, he was going to be around and available. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I'm not sure. Maybe. I mean, they might. Uh, I did hear somewhere that, like, there could be an option where that they leave Boba shut out for another game. Uh, you know, I, I mean, it could be a possibility. It's back-to-back -back days. You're flying in. Uh, I I wouldn't be upset if he was outside of the, or out of the lineup again because... I mean, we're looking at a lot of guys on this team, the Toronto Blue Jays, we're going to get to, that are looking pretty good, that are filling in in a good way. Obviously, no one is Bo Bichette. Mm. So, you know, don't twist my words right there. Nobody's Bo Bichette. But uh, it's nice to see other guys stepping up for the Blue Jays while he's gone. You need it, man. Um, like, you need to have depth on your team. Championship rosters go through moments in time in a, in a season of 162 games, go through moments in time where – their star guys are injured. I mean, hell, the, you know, I hate to say that, you know, championship teams, but look at the New York Yankees right now. Their best pitcher is yeah. going to be gone for months. They go into Houston. They sweep those guys yeah. four games to nothing, yeah. right? Like, they, they're not slowing down, right? If anything, it's like they're juiced up about it, being like, hey, we, we got to play that much better because our guy is injured right now. So everyone's going to go through injuries, but it is a beautiful sight to see that the Toronto Blue Jays have depth on this team that is showing up. And the first guy that we got to touch on right here is Ernie goddamn Clement, dude. Holy mother of God. My what God. this guy has been doing right now at the MLB level in just, you know, a game, game and a half, two games, uh, it's, it is really, really impressive, man. Flash over to this play right here. This one blew us away, guys. We posted a whole reaction of, of our stream yesterday. Mm -hmm. The reaction from this one was phenomenal <laughs> because holy mother of God, that's crazy. Yeah, before I even comment on the range of Ernie Clement right here, just absolutely impressive to throw off that left foot and make it across the diamond. Also, great play by Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Yes. I mean, to stretch it. Was his foot off the bag? We don't know. You know, <laughs> we got the out, man. That's we all got, that matters. We got the out, right? But great play to stay on the bag, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Make the stretch and make the catch. Honestly, that back end was just as good as that front end mm -hmm. of that play. But still, he, this isn't the first play he's made. That was just on Sunday. He made a great play the other day when he dove 
I mean, he was ranging to his right. He had to dive and touch third base for the force out. That was a great play to get out of the inning. You, you know was also what, uh, Sorry to cut you off, but you know what that reminded me of? Because uh-huh. he was like, his body weight and his momentum was forcing him outside. Like, he, his body wanted to fall the other way, and he was, right. he was fighting it. It reminded me of, and Keegan Madsen tweeted out that, that Ernie Clint's an athlete, and I, I agree yeah. with him, but it reminded me of, like, a wide receiver tiptoeing on the sideline as they're trying to stay in and then cut inside. And it was like Ernie Clement fighting his momentum to then jump onto the bag. It's just incredible See, display of athleticism. I, I thought you were going to say, that, yeah, I like to get, to like kind of turn real quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that play did, that's a good uh, comparison. And I mean, I thought you were going to refer to the next play I was going to bring up, which was the one where he was ranged to his right and he threw uh, at third base. This was the other game at third base, ranging to his right. And then making a throw across his body reminded me of Ar- Nolan Arenado. Right. I know you don't, I don't want to compare him to a Gold Glove Nolan Arenado, but we're seeing Gold Glove caliber defense from Ernie Clement in just a few games. Uh, which, to me, point being is yes, if Bo Bichette is hurt, if it is a little bit more concerning, we haven't got any more updates today. Hopefully, we see something later. We'll probably be posting it on our social media. So, guys, follow us there. Mm. Stay up to date with the latest news on Bo Bichette. But if he is going to be out for today. I feel so much more comfortable putting in the great glove of Ernie. Mm. Plus, dude's got three hits so far in his limited at bat. So, mm. I mean, that's a positive for me. Yeah, 100%, dude. I mean, like, he is definitely producing with the bat, and I want to touch on that in a mm-hmm. second. But, I mean, <laughs> I know we paid Isaiah Conner for 15 oh, mil. Oh, dude, but let's talk about it. No, but seriously, like, <laughs> Blue Jays fans are already coming out and being like, that's my third base. Yes. That's my guy. And look, this is a this is a huge overreaction because we're For talking sure. about like, you know, a couple at bats, handful of at bats here, handful of plays. Yeah. And, um, but he does look like he belongs. He does look right. like he belongs. And if there is, you know, somewhere down the line a reality where, hey, majority of the innings out there at third. That's Ernie Clement, and Isaiah Conor Falefa is more of like that bench role that we thought Ernie Clement was going to be. If we ever get to a place like that, I just want to put it out there and say, like, I'm cool with it. I, I am cool with it. Like, look, I, you know how much I love the Ernie Clement, you know, contract. Uh, sarcasm in- intended right there. But Isaiah Conor Falefa uh, contract. Oh, sorry. The Isaiah Conor Falefa contract. Excuse me. I just got Clement on my mind mm-hmm, all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you look at what they did so far, I mean, they literally did the same thing, right? They both got three hits and nine at-bats. So, you know, you could argue, oh, they're literally the same player. Isaiah Conor Falefa, an extra OPS right there. <laughs> yeah. You know, a little bit more. And, uh, you know, ICAF hasn't been bad defensively. He actually made some pretty good plays. I remember right at the end of the game, he made a great, like, diving play he to, did. like, catch a line drive. He did. Uh, so, it's not like we're He's not doing good. So I'll give him a little bit of credit there. It's just when, again, it comes down to the contract. When you look at Ernie Clement being a fringe 26-man guy on the roster, you know, a minor league contract, and he comes out and he's looking good in a limited time. Then you got Isaiah Kainfleffa, which is getting paid $7.5 million to do the exact same thing as this minor league guy. Right. That's where the problem is. So if we have, you know, IKF on for another year, mm-hmm. I'm cool with, like, putting him in the back end, you know, on the bench, I mean. And having Ernie play most of the time, granted, we got to see how the next few series shape up. Yes. If these guys are still performing like we, we hope they're going to perform. And if you give Clement more playing time, have IKF on the bench, we're going to have him next year. Are we going to have Ernie next year? Maybe not. Right. I want to I soak that value out of that good glove and the good bat out of Clement. Yeah, exactly, right. And that's a, that's a whole other conversation is Ernie Clement's contract. And I can't even believe that we're talking about this after <laughs> literally nine at-bats, right? And again, I know. that needs to be the umbrella over all of this, right? Like, I understand. We're four games into the season. Yeah. Things are going to change. The good things that we did in Series 1, you know, next week they're going to be the bad yeah. things. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's all going to be uh, moving and, and flowing as the season progresses. But... It is safe to say that in the early goings, Ernie Clement is looking really good. Now, he's going to have a new challenge soon, though. He's going to have a very new challenge yeah, soon. Because yeah. so far, the three hits that he has, everybody, the three hits here, flash over to, yeah, right here. Mm-hmm. So this is this is uh, one of his singles. I think it's actually the first hit that he had uh, so far with the Toronto Blue Jays. And as you can see, it's a middle-middle fastball, right? That's uh, that's Posh for the Tampa Bay Rays. He, he's challenging him. Mm-hmm. And pretty much all of the hits, there's only three of them so far, mm-hmm. but... They've been in the zone. They've middle. been middle in the zone. And that goes to show us that MLB pitchers, they're not really respecting Ernie Clement. And uh, and they're saying, hey, like our stuff, we think it's better than you. And Ernie's saying, no, it ain't. Throw it in the zone. I'm going to hit that thing. But the book is going to get out very quickly. It's like, okay, this guy is kind of dangerous at the dish. Let's not throw him middle, middle. Let's start throwing outside and seeing if he chases, if he bites on some of the sliders going away from him. 
So I, I anticipate mm -hmm. that there's going to be, you know, maybe not this series, maybe not next series, but sooner rather than later, an adjustment to how they attack Ernie yeah. Clement. Just like the pitchers are uh, going to be looking at Ernie Clement very closely and how he, what's his weak spots, we also got to be looking for that too. We got to be watching his eight Bs. I've been kind of just glazing over like, oh, Ernie Clement's been getting hits. He's been attacking his pitches because, yeah, you're right. They've been challenging him pretty early. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could probably say the same thing about Davis Schneider last year. Who's this guy that got called up out of nowhere? Let's attack him. And then what does he do? He does damage. So yep. there's going to be some sort of adjustment. We'll have to wait and see. And that's where you got the luxury of, and I hate to say it, you have the luxury of having IKF uh, behind or, or with Ernie mm -hmm. Clement in that third base kind of middle infield role and David Schneider and Kevin Biggio with the utility roles. So what's the great thing about the Toronto Blue Jays right now? Yes, we don't have a locked in third baseman or second baseman, but we have a lot of guys with a lot of potential who deserve playing time in their own right. Totally. So it, it, it's a great luxury to have. Exactly, right? And again, like, hate on Isaac Connor for left as much as you want. It's been 30, 333 after one series. Yeah. You know? So, I, yeah. it's look, so it's 30. It's exactly. 30. Yeah. That's the thing, right? I mean, like, it's not like this guy was stinking it up at the dish in yeah. this series. Like, he actually was putting up, so credit where credit is due, although clearly the hype train has left the station <laughs> when it comes to Ernie Clement. And, uh, and I think that really, like, the defense is the big, big factor here for Toronto Blue Chase fans because... Uh, in the first couple games, especially defensively speaking, well, it was a bit of an issue, guys. We yeah. were up there in the errors early on. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, number three in team fielding. In terms of errors, you got eight from the Oakland Athletics. I mean, I don't think anyone's shocked by that. Yeah. But then, well, you, have, then you have the LA Dodgers. They you know? played two extra games than us, That's though. true. So That's just true. putting it out there, putting it out there. Very, very true. And then the Toronto Blue Jays, you know, I think if you just go by fielding percentage, that might be a better one. Oh, actually, fielding? Oh, no, that's a, that's a good fielding percentage. We're, we're second worst in oh. baseball right there. Okay. And, uh, you know, <laughs> you look at the who's committing the errors. Well, it's not the outfield. It's You got two errors by Bo Bichette and two by Turner. I touched on the Bo Bichette error in, mm. a, in a short on our Instagram and TikTok. Uh, the Boba Shed errors are, you, you haven't touched on it just yet. What, what are your concerns, if you're concerned at all, about, uh, about those plays right there? Well, uh, okay. Well, one of them, I mean, one of them really wasn't, wasn't yeah. that much of an error for me. I think you talked about this in your short. Yeah. It's like, you know, Vladdy definitely could have come up with that. I mean, like, you know, uh, Freddie Freeman comes up with that ball. I'm not saying mm -hmm. that he's Freddie Freeman, but like he would, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, so like that was kind of on both of them, I think, in my opinion, the first one for sure, like that's just Boba Shed, like you know, making mm. a mistake, and, mm. and he did. And I also think, too, though, right, even when you're looking at not necessarily what's categorized as an error, I still remember, I think it was in game three, where uh, a ball was hit, you know, on the ground, and he was ranging, he was raining, it was, looked like he was going to get there, and it almost looked like the oh. ball just, like, passed directly just underneath his glove. his glove, right? And and that's one of those things where that's Bo, and uh, mm. Frankie Lindor he makes that play 10 times out of 10, but right. Bobachet's just not necessarily going to get there. So I'm not, I don't want to go as far to say that I'm concerned about this because we've been aware of it. You know, right. like the Toronto Blue Jays have made playoffs with Bobachet getting 23 errors and being in the, <laughs> the top three in the MLB. I don't want right. that, but, uh, but I'm just saying it's, it's, I, I'm not overtly worried about it right now. I'm not worried. I'm going to actually channel a lot of the guys or people online that are that are worried about mm -hmm. Bobachet because I'm not. I'm gonna say it right now. I'm not. But just for playing devil's advocate, people are saying, well, you know, to that point, they have never won a playoff game with Bobachet at shortstop. It, you know, you typically want a great defender, and he's always been below average. People are saying, no, after those two errors, you got to move him over to second base. That's always the conversation. I just don't think the Blue Jays are ever gonna do that. Unless there's a guy that's clearly better, maybe Ernie Clement, I don't mm. know. But like, I think you you name him your guy. It's a confidence thing. You give it to him because what he does with the bat. You know, you don't want to be switching up Bo's mentality, even though it might be, seem very simple to us sitting on the couch. Going over to short and second, going over to short and second base, it's a big hit. It's right. a big hit from a, from an ego standpoint, from a playing standpoint. It's a whole different side of the field. You know, I, I think you just don't touch with it because of how much positive war he gives you on the offensive side of the ball. It all depends the situation, okay? I mean, like, if he has uh, 10 errors by the end of April, then maybe you do. But, I'm, maybe you, you know, like, about it. that's the right, thing, right? right. It, but it, that would be, like, the worst possible case scenario. I also don't think that the Toronto Blue Jays have ever necessarily had a other option, right? There's never really been some guy in, in, in the system that's, like, he's going to come up Clearly. immediately, like, oh, like, it's a great shortstop defender guy. Like, we, we've never really had that. So I feel like that's also part of the decision. 
Either way, though, uh, obviously, infield defense needs to be cleaned up. Bobachet knows that. I'm not going to say that I'm happy with how they necessarily performed in the infield. Right. Outfield, phenomenal. Uh, but yeah, infield definitely needs to be cleaned up, and he's not the only one. Justin Turner was out there. Uh, first play, I think, that he made at third base. Yeah, uh, I think it was at the third game. Uh, yeah, like, ball comes to him, you know, throws that one wild. Uh, and uh, yeah, just not, not great from him either. Again, I'm not overtly concerned because he's a veteran guy. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we got to be better. <laughs> yeah, I think, well, first of all, he's not going to be playing a lot of third base. And I know a lot of people online are saying, do never never play Justin Turner at third base. And I, I get it because he's had three attempts, right, three chances, and he's committed two errors. He's had one assist so far with a 33, uh, 333 Wow, his fielding percentage, percentage is yeah. like a good batting average. Yeah, yeah, That's, literally. That yeah. is tough. That is it's tough. tough. I mean, that first play you're talking about, was a tough play. It's his first play at third base in, I don't know, God knows how long, mm. right? And, he, and it's a bunt play where he's ranging in, and he has to come up and make the throw on the run and get the out. So, you know, maybe he's not expecting that at 39 years old to be right. making that sort of athletic play. And then, but the here's the concerning one, is the second one uh, was an easy chopper to him. He collects himself, he makes a throw, and he air mails it. So, mm. for me... I'm not writing Justin Turner off saying you can never play third base because then that, that pigeonholes you into never being flexible with that DH spot ever again. You're either going to have to sacrifice Turner's bat, which we clearly don't want to do after this series. Right. Um, so I think you got to be able to be flexible to keep him over there. I don't know if you got to get more reps there, Justin Turner, but I'm not ruling him out just yet because we need that bat in the lineup. No, of course not. I mean, like that would be like me saying after this one series that Dalton Varsho can never be in the lineup again yeah. because he had a bad series, yeah. and he did, right? He yeah. wasn't very good. But ultimately, we're not going to make that a reaction after one series. Yeah, this, especially on three chances, <laughs> like <laughs> that is definitely rough, it's not going to lie there. <laughs> but I don't think that you're going to see Justin Turner at third base more than twice a week, you know, right. like it's going to be one of those things where we're getting Isaiah Conner for left off of his feet or it's, a, you know, I, I don't know mm -hmm. what the situation is, but like, yeah, most of the time it will be probably an IKF, maybe an Ernie Clement, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, Justin Turner is there uh, in case of something else. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And look, we, we need Turner's bat in the lineup, like we're saying, because Turner is a valuable asset. We saw what he did this week and it was absolutely phenomenal. And that yeah. takes us to our next point, guys, our next segment, which is it's time to crown the J of the Week. Shout out to Justin Turner, clearly Let's here go. at Blue Jays today. Uh, we're suckers for offense, <laughs> you know, because uh, yeah, make are. an argument that defensively speaking, he doesn't deserve it. Right, but this right. guy effectively single-handedly won us the game yesterday yeah. uh, and split the series with the Tampa Bay Rays. I tweeted this out earlier today, everyone, and I think that this is an important point. Mm -hmm, we talk mm -hmm. a lot about how Guerrero uh, needs to catch the fastball and how good MLB players will catch the fastball. And Justin Turner being 39 years old, there was a conversation about, oh, well, you know, like this guy's up there in age. It's getting harder for him to turn on one. Is he going to be able to catch that fastball? Out of his four hits, every single one of them is a fastball. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, that just goes to show you that clearly at 39 years old, this guy can still turn on one. He can still come up clutch. And then I looked at this over here. It's actually the StatCast one mm -hmm. uh, up there. This is really this is really important for me. And this is, uh, I think, the main reason why we got this guy. Okay, so keep in mind, Guerrero and Biggio and Dalton Varsha, they've played in every single game. Right. So far, they've played in every single game. They've had all the at-bats. Justin Turner came in halfway through a game. Mm -hmm. He is still up there with all of those guys yeah. in terms of total pitches. His at-bats are longer than everyone else. He's working pitchers more than everybody else, right? So every single time that this guy comes up to the dish, it takes a while to either get him out yeah. or you walk him or it results in a hit. All of these things are extended. It's not like one pitch, we're done. Two pitches, we're done. No, he makes the pitcher work for it. And that is that veteran, patient presence that we really want to see. I am so happy with how turn and burn has been doing so far. <laughs> yeah, I mean, great example. Just to cherry pick one is that double he hit, the big hit that was we flashed over just moments ago. Uh, that was a six-pitch at back on two, on, on two strikes. So yeah. he had to break down his swing, and he was still able to bounce it off the wall, right, for to drive in some runs in a clutch situation. So I am, I am very ecstatic. Uh, he had a phenomenal week. You know, and uh, I can't wait to see what he's doing. I can't believe I benched him 
in in fantasy, bro. Yeah, you're never I, making that mistake. I'm again. never making it again. Just like uh, I'm never making a mistake, or like John Schneider of putting him on the bench to start a game. Mm -mm. You gotta you gotta start this guy as much as possible, even if it means playing him at third base. Yeah, exactly. And at the very worst possible case scenario, Justin Turner is gonna go 0 for 4, but yeah. he's gonna rack up, you know, two quality at bats in that outing, and he's gonna work the pitcher. And this is something that. Uh, you know, we saw in, I think it was, was it game two or game three when the Toronto Blue Jays, like, we were attacking, we were attacking, we were attacking. And, uh, and like, the, you know, the Tampa Bay race pitcher was, like, 30 pitches in three innings. And it was, like, how the hell did this happen, right? right? Justin Turner was one of the few guys in that outing that was actually making this guy work, making mm -hmm. him pitch around the edges, forcing him to come to Justin mm -hmm. Turner. And obviously the results don't lie. So shout out to Justin Turner for mm -hmm. having a phenomenal week, for almost single-handedly winning us that game yesterday, and for and for showing off that veteran presence. I really hope that some of these other guys are watching what he's doing and mm -hmm. going, oh shit, maybe, maybe I don't have to swing every time, you know? Maybe <laughs> I can, like, take my time with it. Well, I, I think the big thing that a lot of these Blue Jay hitters can get from Justin Turner is the fact that he's able to make so much contact with the ball. And I mean, like... You look at Bo Bichette and like you think, oh, people would look at him and be like, wow, I don't know how he's able to do it. If he's able to like fight off pitches and keep the bats prolonged, you got to look at Justin Turner and what he's able to do. Even with two strikes, it's not, oh, I, I got to defend and I got to. He he's, in, he's still in an attack mode a bit where I'm just putting the barrel on the ball. I'm mm -hmm. not worried about getting a base hit. I'm just trying to make contact mm -hmm. and hopefully one falls in. That's a great two strike approach. And I, I need to see more of that as a team. Team mentality. I don't care about your stats about hitting homers and hitting doubles. Team mentality, you got to cut down the swing. People are going to be different. People play their own games. But I've always just been a fan of that. And I need to see more of Justin Turner's approach and other people too. Yeah, I completely agree, man. Also, a couple other shout-outs mm -hmm. here from the past week. Guerrero, yes. good series, man. Good yes. series. The thing that I am the most happy about is look at that look at that base on balls category right there. Yeah. Five walks for Vladdy. That's, that is when you know that our guy is locked in. In fact, he's got a 500 on base percentage right yeah. now, small sample size, but dude's getting on base half of the time. Yeah. Uh, it, whenever you start seeing like these, some of these you know, really elite hitters, especially like Guerrero, like these power guys, start walking more, um, that's, what, that's a great sign to see that they could be in for a big year. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of walking, you need Kevin Bisho to get his walks. That's when he's at his best. Mm -hmm. Here in three, he's got an on base of 400. I like to see it. He's actually come up with clutch a few times. He's got three RBIs so far. Yeah. And he's been sitting in that nine hole. I saw him move up to that eight hole in the last game. We're watching live play-by-play. -play. You know, we're having a conversation, too, about the lefties. I mean, that's always been the conversation. Which lefty is going to bat in that fifth spot of the lineup? Mm. I think there's an argument that if Dalton Varsho struggles, flip-flop him and, uh, and Biggio. Biggio's yeah. been coming up clutch a lot. I like to see it. I like his ability to, in, down in the bottom part of the order to get on base for the big boys. But... I'd much rather have the guys get driven in. Well, speaking of Dalton Varsho, like, he's close to the bottom there, everybody. He was in every game, and defensively mm. speaking, oh, yeah. the guy was, like, ranging all over the field for sure. Uh, but, yeah, I, at the plate, it felt like my guy was a little lost. And we were kind of surprised at Blue Jays today because mm -hmm. in spring training, you know, the approach looked pretty good. We yes. were talking to Joe Siddle about him. He was saying it's like, yeah, like, Varsho's made a couple adjustments. He's liking what he's seeing. Everyone was on the Varsho train and again, this is one series. We're not going to go crazy mm -hmm. here. Um, but I do think that, you know, forgetting about the results, the approach at the dish yeah. wasn't one where I would anticipate you're going to find a whole lot of success. No, there I mean, there were some umpire bad calls. Maybe this was a factor, but probably not. Maybe played a little bit into it. We got a lot of bad calls up and in. Remember the early games when they were getting like horrible calls off the plate up and in? And then what, what followed that? He would lay off it. What followed that? He'd then start chasing them. Mm -hmm. And I noticed a few at-bats like that, but then ever since then... He just didn't follow his approach. He struck out on a fastball upstairs on two strikes. He's been chasing a lot of these up pitches, which is exactly what the pitchers are going to do. Why would they change anything from last year? Mm. You've got to be able to adjust to prove it on the big league level. And he didn't do that. I need to see that Dalton, that Dalton Varsho looking middle. Keep the eyesights down and swing down, chop the wood. None of this upstairs stuff. If you keep the eyesight down, your, your body will react to not swing at the upstairs pitch. You want to react to the stuff downstairs and be ahead of that. 
because that's where you are. That's where you find your success. I need more of that from Delta Varsha if he's going to bat fifth in this lineup. Look, you saw it with Guerrero, right? In that first game, it was so clear that this guy had one area yes. of the zone. It was a great tweet. Who tweeted it out? Uh, he came on the, the sports now. I forget his name. Yeah. Mike uh, Petriello. There you go. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, yeah. Go check out his Twitter if you want to see this graphic. But legitimately, like, one small zone. Mm -hmm. Out there in the first game for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Great game that he had. He hit a home run. Uh, he had a lot of hard hit balls, which is another thing to note. He is hitting the ball very, very yes, hard right is. now. But that's because he's got one spot in the zone right now. And he says, look, if you're not going to put it there, I'm not going to swing. Which is probably why he's racked up five walks as well. He's not going to chase stuff that's upstairs or down low. You know, those sliders mm -hmm. that always used to get Vladdy, you know, going away from the bat. I saw a couple this weekend that were like, Perfect sliders. Yeah. You know, like, to it, like pinpoint Jr. dotted, yeah. like just one inch outside bottom corner of the zone. Vladdy spits on that shit. Yeah. He said, not for me, not for me. And, you know, ends up resulting in a walk or a base knock or something like that. Um, but yeah. that's what Dalton Varsho needs to bring back into his game. He had it in spring training. He had his zone. He had his spot. And like you said, right now, it feels like, you know, this is yeah. the spot right now. It, it's my eyes light up at the fastball upstairs. It's understandably so if you keep your eyes just general, but he's got to keep his eyes low. I, I just want to come up to one thing you said about Vladdy. I like that you pointed that out, that slider, because when we're, when we're talking about keeping that middle of the, the uh, uh, eyesight, that middle of the plate, that's where the sliders will get you because you'll see it coming yeah. in and it slides away. So there's even a next level where Vladdy's recognizing the spin off the baseball mm. and having the discipline early to lay off it. So that's even more impressive. Exactly. No, I mean, right now, Guerrero looks phenomenal. Guerrero mm. looks phenomenal. Justin Turner looks phenomenal. Ernie Clement looks great, guys. We are very happy with all of those dudes. Mm -hmm. uh, before we get to this next thing, though, this would be a great opportunity to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video. Time for a quick shout out to Betway. Betway is the best place to make all of your sports bets on all of your favorite teams. Betway is also in collaboration with iGaming Ontario. Must be 19 years older to participate. And guys, please bet responsibly. Now, back to the content. Shout out to Betway, everybody, for being absolutely phenomenal. Hop on there if you want to do any sports betting. They are mm -hmm. the best. Uh, before we get to our next thing, I want to give a quick shout out here to Craig, who's saying, well, Turner looks like a huge upgrade over Belt, regardless of him batting right-handed. Now, mm -hmm. um, first off, I mean, Belt was great for us. I think Brandon Belt was great. For sure. Uh, but I just wanted to touch on the fact that, you know, Brandon Belt doesn't even have a job yet. No, he doesn't. That's wild It is. Me. It is kind of wild. And, you know, we got Turner who's older than him. I, I would have thought somebody would have gave him a chance. But yeah. But clearly there's no need. There's no job right now for him for, at first base. Uh, he came out, there was an article that came out today or yesterday, and yeah, it was just like Brandon Belt coming out and saying, like, I'm kind of flabbergasted right yeah. now. You know, I had an 850 OPS yeah. last year. I was really good at baseball. Does anyone want to give me any money? I think somebody should pick this guy up. I obviously don't think it's going to be the Toronto Blue Jays now that we have Justin Turner right, right. turning and burning. Uh, but, I mean, again, like Brandon Belt, I always liked Brandon Belt. I hope that this guy does get the money from someone. I, I agree. I agree. And you know what? And to comment on his thing about uh, how Turner he likes better than Belt, and I, I do agree, here's, here's why you like him better. Belt strikes out. You know? Yeah, he gets his yeah. walks. He gets his OPS nice and high. But when I need him to come up clutch and drive and runs, guess who does it the best? It's Turner. You're right. You need you need to have a top at bat with the runners in scoring position, and I'd rather have that than Brandon Belt. Yeah, hundred percent, dude. I was watching Moneyball the other day. He gets on base. Yeah. That's Justin Turner for you guys. Yeah. 186 people watching. If you haven't already done so, please hit the like and the subscribe button. Let's quickly talk about mm -hmm. Henesis Cabrera appealing three game suspension. We were live for this. Gives uh, uh gives Caballero a little bit of a push, a little mm -hmm. bit of a shove. Also, gives him a little bit of shoulder yeah. when he runs into we, him. We missed that in the live play-by-play -play initially, mm -hmm. but a little bit of a, a reaction to uh, that, that error in, in the run scored. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we don't need to touch on this too no. long, but, I mean, my analysis from this is... Um, Stupid. Uh, <laughs> like, you have anything it's, else to say? It's emotions. It's emotions. You're early. You're fired up in the in the opening series. Um, the, for, for the actual push we're talking about, yeah, that's my analysis on that. The three game suspension, I get it because it was like right at the head. Yeah. Uh, so absolutely, someone could have got hurt by that. I totally get it. Um, I'm fine with it. I mean, you, we probably would uh, have a stretch. I said this to you off camera. We probably would have a stretch in the season where we wouldn't even see Cabrera. Sure. Uh, so we'll see. We'll wait and see. We don't know exactly when the appeal process is going to end. But whenever it does end, most likely, actually, I probably would bet a lot of money that he will get suspended. These things never 
get appealed and you're like, oh, actually, you know what? You're good now. Yeah. No, they always go through. So at some point, he'll serve it. That's just another L to the bullpen. Hopefully uh, later down the line because we need to have Romano and Swanson back. Soon. Yeah, keep in mind the timing of this incident, right? This is literally right yeah. at the, the top of the season. You know, MLB is not about to roll over right now and be like, oh, never mind. Like, we're cool with pushing. No, like, you know, this guy pushed a dude that he shouldn't have done. They're going to slap him on the wrist and say, hey, league, take a look. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. You know, like, to because it is especially, like, literally first series. So, mm -hmm. yeah, dumb from Hennessy Cabrera. I understand your emotions are heightened right now, but, like, you know, let's not let's do that. Let's be a little bit better. Let's think about the team right now. For real. You know? For real. All right, let's move on, guys, and let's break down the upcoming series against the Houston Nationals. Before we do, big shout out to the 190 of you guys in here. We'll talk to you guys a little bit later. Maybe we'll, we'll get a little bit of interaction for our wheel thing. So, guys, stay tuned for that a little bit after. But right now, we got to talk about this Houston series. Very, very interesting, actually, when you think about it, because Houston got swept by the Yankees mm -hmm. for nothing. They've been burning their bullpen a lot. We, yeah. took, we took a look over here. I'll just kind of quickly flash it up. Their bullpen's being burnt right now. Yep. You got MLB.com uh, looking over here. I love this breakdown. They're getting burned. They got Montero, who's like uh, re relatively rested, Presley relatively rested, because they got a lot of their guys who give them length in innings. I, mm. I bet they got blown up a ton in that series. hater has been used a lot. I know. That's going to be huge for us. Did you see the Juan Soto at bat? Oh, against... it was incredible. It was incredible. You know, and that's that's the difference, man. Like, I, you, I'm sure that some of you guys have seen it. If not, like, go take a look at it at MLB. Uh Juan yes. Soto, I mean, Josh Hader is like the best in the business, like literally right. the best in the business. Right. And if you watch that at bat against Juan Soto, he is pitching really well, yes. really, really well. Like all of his stuff, I'm like, wow, that's really good stuff. Juan Soto's just different, yes, like he is. literally yeah. built different. When you mentioned off the top of the show, like, you know, Yankees, I don't know if Garrett Cole is still in 4 0. What's the difference? It's that guy. It that, was, that guy. It right was there. fucked up, dude. I mean, like, the, the clutch of this guy, and I saw somebody breaking this down saying, you know, Yankees, and I hate this, I truly hate this, <laughs> but Yankees have been looking for that guy to be able to come up in clutch moments. I thought that and, was Aaron Judge. And no one was able to, like, fill in, and, like, they were, they were you know, falling in the moment. Juan Soto lives for that stuff, yeah. dude. Like, he literally yeah. he thrives in it, right? You, you saw his face shuffling around on Josh Hader. Like, this guy, <laughs> you know, this guy knew three pitches ago he was going to get a hit. He was yeah. just, you know, it was a matter of time. So, again, like, I guess credit to the Yankees for getting yeah. that guy. Holy crap, he's good at baseball. Yes, he is. Hey, real, actually, real quick before we go to the Houston series, let's take a look at the ALE standings because that directly, uh, the Houston series that the Yankees played and directly impacts where we are I in know. these standings, guys. I know. You got the New York Yankees up 4 nothing so far. It's early. You know, it's never too early a scoreboard watch. I love doing this stuff, guys. Mm -hmm. But you got a three way tie for that third spot. You know, Baltimore hasn't played four games yet, so they get to sit at the number two spot. But um, yeah, I mean the Yankees right there. I mean that's uh, that's a little bit that's a little bit not like no oh, no they're gonna they're gonna win the AL East. But right. you know we got some work to do. Especially we're not gonna break it down just yet. We'll break it down on Friday. But we got a Yankee series this weekend. That'll be that'll be very very huge. Yeah, man. And I I think too it's you always got to factor in the quality of competition right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, like that is a huge momentum booster to walk in to Houston, mm -hmm. to deal with Houston, you know, the, the juggernaut of the American League for effectively the last decade, to deal with them, go 4-0, and and, and do it in some dramatic fashion, like Juan Soto yeah. coming up clutch there against their best pitcher, that's a statement win. That is a huge statement W for the New York Yankees. So, you're right, four games, whatever, it's no big deal. Uh, but, yeah, I'm kind of concerned about the momentum that they're about to they, – they have right now. Just like the New York Yankees had Juan Soto coming up in clutch spots, the Blue Jays have an equal clutch guy in Justin Turner. Yeah, off-season <laughs> acquisitions level. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's break it down, guys. The first game is tonight at 8 o'clock. You've got – the debut of Bowden Francis in the mm -hmm. starting role for the Toronto Blue Jays this year. He's going to go up against the number five pitcher of the Houston Astros, Blanco. Yep. I don't know too much about this guy, so I'm, 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 I hate to speak very weakly about it, but this is effectively, yeah, their fifth guy in the rotation. Um, what are your thoughts? What do you kind of expect? I think the big kind of conversation here is Bowden Francis. What can we get from him tonight? Yeah, honestly, man, like I have, I don't have any expectations. I'm hopeful of right. things. 
but expectation i feel like it's almost you know it's just wrong to expect anything of this kid like you're almost like putting something on him if, if you're expecting him to do something because this is gonna mm. be like one of the first times that he's ever starting in the mlb right right and it's against an opponent like houston in houston it's gonna be really really tricky i think that if you walk away from this and you get you know five innings three earned runs you're laughing like yeah, you're genuinely yeah. laughing i would be very happy with that from bowden francis i think that he just needs to avoid the blow up because yep. Yep. again folks like the lights are going to be extremely bright we're starting a new series uh, it's the houston astros you're dealing with some of the most dangerous hitters in the game of baseball i i know me personally if i was on the mound I'd be shitting bricks. Yeah. Uh, so again, just like <laughs> stay within yourself, Bowden. Avoid the blow up. Try to give us a chance to win. You know, you know what this kind of reminds me of? Very different because uh, you know Bowden was never a number one prospect, but Nate Pearson. I think it was two years ago, 2022. He got his uh, first start of the season against the Houston Astros in Houston. Right. And he got absolutely dummied. Absolutely dummied. So. It's not the greatest start. I'm not going to hold this whole start against him, but mm. I'm hoping for, yeah, you're right. Like, give me five. Wow, I'm laughing. Four is what I'm kind of expecting, yeah. which brings me to my next point here. Looking at the Blue Jays bullpen, we're going to need some guys to give us a little bit of length. Like, if we're really expecting four innings, you got to have some length. And what I'm kind of worried about is, yes, you don't have Romano and you don't have Swanson, mm -hmm. so who are you going to pitch in these middle innings in the five, maybe the six, right? You're looking at... Pearson looks yeah. pretty good. He was kind of warming up. He didn't actually go in. Oh, did he go in? Yeah, no, he did didn't. go in for a little bit. Pitched eight oh, innings Oh, you're yesterday. right. You're my, my mistake. Yeah. yeah. So Very he's, quick. he's relatively ready to go for today. So in the middle innings, you got Nate Pearson. Maybe in a big spot, you see Chad Green. Um, Cabrera they might use against some of those tough lefties in the middle innings. Maybe Meza. So those, yeah. like, it's going to be, we got lots of guys, but uh, we got to be able to use them early. Correct me if I'm wrong here. Trevor Richards has given some length before. Right? Yeah, he's able to give you know, some length. You're a, absolutely right. Like, I could honestly see Trevor Richards, again, like, depending on how close the game is, like, if it is a four-inning thing, I could see Richards coming in and, and giving two innings of work, yeah. right? Trying to trying to bridge you over to the, the back half of the bullpen. But, yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> looking at this this graph right here, this, uh, this <laughs> breakdown, I miss Romano and Swanson, <laughs> man. I yep. miss them, right? It, it, there is definitely a contrast of talent. I do need to give a quick shout out to Mitch White, yeah. who actually was really solid yesterday yes, against yes, the Tampa was. Bay Rays. I mean, we're going to get on Mitch White a lot over here, as you guys do as well. But you got to praise the guy when he does well. You know, he was pretty phenomenal yesterday. Three innings pitched, no earned runs. So that's solid. However, we're not going to have him today at all. So that's really mm -hmm. too bad. We mm -hmm. might be able to get him back, you know, uh, later in the series against Houston, potentially. Uh, but yeah, today's mm -hmm. going to be a tough one for sure. It's yeah. going to be a tough one. I think you're right. I think the game plan should be you pitch you pitch uh, uh, Bowden Francis. Mm -hmm. You bring in either like a, a you know lefty to get out the big lefties in Yoran Alvarez and Kyle Tucker. Like you bring in Tim Meza maybe for a spot there in the middle. Then you bring in Trevor Richards to give you two, maybe three innings. Bridge you over. That should probably be the game plan to set up Garcia or Chad Green in the late innings. If you're in a winning position. If you're in a winning yeah. position. So that's, that's the thing. The <laughs> there's, there's a lot of moving parts here, guys. And yeah. for me, that is probably why I'm saying we are going to take the first L here, just because there's a lot of question marks. I would imagine as well, even though Houston's down bad, they're going to be yeah. they're going to be pressured to do something. You know, those Houston fans. Uh, you know, they're not, um, they're not going to sit around and wait too long, man. Uh, like this team is built to win. Mm -hmm. They're going to be pissed after letting the Yankees come yeah. in and do that to them. Yeah. Uh, so I hate to say it, but we might act as a bit of their punching bag tonight. See, here's the thing. And not, and not to say the Blue Jays aren't good or, or can't be as good as the Yankees, but when you face stiff competition for four days straight, you lose all four. Now your focus level is so much more heightened. Blue Jays, we haven't really, yeah, we had some good, we had a good game yesterday, but now we're flying in, you know, we're, we're split the series, we're not as heightened. Maybe maybe you could argue we were against the Bay Rays, but I think, you know, Houston's been staying there, they haven't left the, their home. I think they're going to be like, they're going to probably dummy us in this first game. I, I actually would tend to agree yeah. with you there. I hate to admit it. I but hate to admit it. Yeah, I, yeah. I do think that I'm going to give this one to Houston. Game two, though. Mm -hmm. You're going to have Jose Burrios, uh, the freaking fracking machine, guys. He's going up against Valdez. Now, Valdez didn't have the best of starts. Uh, 5.79 ERA, as you can see right there. So the first one was a little rough for him. Jose Burrios on the other side of things. Uh, 
Very good for the Toronto Blue Jays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, I feel good about this pitching matchup, man. I'm thinking that Jose Jose is going to have a one hell of a year, and I think he continues. Yeah, uh, it is so tough, you know. Um, the, the matchup's really good. I mean, I think the recency bias, because Valdez got blown up, is yep. right there. But Valdez is one hell of He's a pitcher. He's also pretty good. Now, the question is, can Jose Barrios deal with the lefties? Yeah, that's a you thing. Know? That's another question. He got that beat was up all last of his, year. All of his right? Problems. And what did we see? You know, he didn't face too many lefties against the Tampa Rays, but we only got to see that cutter one time that was supposed to be his lefty get out pitch. Mm -hmm. For me, and I, I hate to say it again, I hate to say it again, uh, I do think we're going to lose this one. And I, I, I don't know why, man. The gut's telling me it's going to be one of those, we'll get Bo back, you know, because last game, like this game tonight, maybe we pitch or we play out. Down to Francis again. Maybe mm -hmm. Bo is still dealing with the neck injury. That offense is good, but it's not good enough because Bowden gets blown up. Then we get Bo back, and then the offense isn't clicking. Mm. It wasn't clicking like it was. Mm. I think this one's going to be a very, very tight uh, contest against great pitching, and we're going to get shut down. Wow. I Two know. and four is where Adam's at right I now. Know. And the final game, uh, are you saying that we're going to get swept here against Javier, who didn't give up <laughs> a single run and got six Ks? This will be different. This is where the other shoe will fall, right, and right, we're going right. to get some runs on him, and Bassett's actually going to bounce back. I, I, overall, like I did want to predict that we were going to go one and two mm -hmm. in this series. I do think Bowden, uh, Bassett excuse me, is going to have a much better outing this time around. He's just too good not to. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think we, we're going to probably drop two here. Just because, and mostly because you have Houston going off of that very hard competition of the New York Yankees for four games straight. And they're still home. They're still at home. Look, one and two feels right. You know, yeah. like it does feel right. Um, but fuck it. We're going to win <laughs> this one. We go two and one. Blue Jays are off to a hot start. Astros are in the mud. They're questioning <laughs> things by the end, by mid-April, you know? That would be phenomenal, actually. To have the Houston down. One to six would be their one be, and six yeah. would be the record. Well, yeah. I think, you know, <laughs> like I... I don't have too much against Houston. Obviously, I know there's a whole cheating thing, but yeah, like I'm, way over I'm just that. like like fatigued of them mm -hmm. doing so well, right? Like whenever you have these dynasties that last for eight, nine, ten years, like I'm just I'm sick of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like leave, let someone else like maybe this is Detroit's year. You know, <laughs> maybe Houston's just like down. They they pull a New York Mets. Like it's just not working. Nobody knows why it's not working. And out of the blue, it's like oh Detroit's in the playoff mix now. Like that'd be exciting for me. That'd just be like a different yeah. new look. I, I'm down for it. I don't let, really like the Seattle Mariners because of what they did to us in 2022. Uh, nothing against them. It's just like, you know, you, you smoked us and you, you beat us up. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and they're really tough to play against. But maybe flip Seattle and Houston for one uh, postseason. Houston doesn't make it this year for the first time in a long time. Well, it, you, we yeah. need to put in some work to make that happen, guys. So let us know mm -hmm. your predictions for this series down below. Would not be shocked at all. If we lose one and two, mm -hmm. uh, if we got swept, it'd be terrible. Oh, but God. if we could walk away with a win in Houston, that would be absolutely massive. Yeah. We are going to be live on that Wednesday night game, everybody. Yeah. Final game in the series. Maybe we're looking for a W. Maybe we're looking to, to not get swept. I'm not mm -hmm. entirely sure. We're going to be live for that one. So mark it in your calendars, and we'll see you there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what? If, if we go three and four, one last comment on this before we transition to the wheel. Mm -hmm. um, that means we're going to have to win New York and I think that's where I'm kind of lying right now. I, I know, man. And that's, <laughs> that's where I didn't want to go. You yeah, know, because I Because they're looking pretty filthy right yeah, now, dude. Yeah. I think that Juan Soto is just going to have he's his unreal. way with us. Dude. Oh, I know. I think he's going to have he, his he, way with us. It, it, we're not special. We can't, we can't beat this guy because we, we can. He's, he he's going to beat everybody. That's the thing, He dude, beat Josh like, Hader. He's beating Josh Hader. Who can he beat? Well, exactly, right? Like, I, you know, you talk about lefties. Like, I, I mean, he's going to crunch Jose Barrios. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> yeah, yeah. I love Jose Barrios, but, like, it's just, it's too much. It's uh, too much. Good thing he doesn't face him this weekend. That's for the real. Thing. Yeah, That's the for thing. real. It'll be Bowden, Bowden Francis. All right, everybody. It is time for the next segment here. Time to spin that wheel. The spinning fortune, baseball, colorful, future determining, stat analyzing, and... Uh, it's a wheel that we spin every week. It is, in fact, a wheel that we spin every single week, guys. We're not about to overreact here. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? It was my week, but look, the, the cha I'm the champ here, and the champ has got to face adversity straight <laughs> up in its face and battle back. Adam takes two categories to my one. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that you got me on the Burrius Bassett thing. I, I mean, I was cool with flipping the coin. I'm going to be cool with flipping that coin pretty much all season long. Yeah. Um, I mean, I should have I should have had the foresight to think Kevin Gossman. But, uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's like... Well, we didn't know at the time. Didn't know we at the didn't time. Know. Didn't know at the yeah. time. So it's tough there. Uh, RBIs. 
Justin Turner yeah, that, feels like the guy. That's a lock one right there. And, and just like last year, home runs, one one homer will probably win it for you. Yeah, <laughs> now, that's the last time I'm picking Dalton Varsho for anything. Yeah, guys. yeah. So, uh, it's my week it's now. It's Adam's week. We're going to spin this thing. Let's see what it's going to be. All right, guys, if you haven't already, play along with us and pick who you would pick for each category. And uh, maybe that'll kind of convince us to make a decision. All right, yeah, first one is from that OPS. Bonus player. OPS. Okay, this is a good one, man. There's a lot of different guys who could go be in for some big weeks here. You're going to yeah. have Houston. You're going to have New York. So tough competition for sure. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of tough competition right here. OPS. Let me think about the options right now. You do have Vladimir Guerrero Jr. looking good. Mm -hmm. You have Justin Turner looking good. Mm -hmm. Both look very good options. So... That being said, I'm going to I'm gonna leave it to you. I'm going to leave it to you for OPS to go first. All right, that's reasonable, man. I'm very comfortable with taking Vladdy Daddy right yeah, here. Yeah. For me, it's the walks that are extremely convincing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Give me the floor of the walks. You you send one over the fence. You give me a couple doubles. That's a W. Okay. All right, and with that being said, the other option, I'm going to go Justin Turner right now. I think he, uh, look, he had a cold start to the series, but... You know, I think he's just getting loosened up. He's going to face some stiff competition, and Houston and York's got some good pitching, so I think Turner will put up some good ABs there. Yeah, no, I, I definitely don't hate that pick at all. Second spin, everybody. Where would you mm -hmm. have gone with that one? Mm -hmm. You got a Turner, you got a Vlad in there. That would <laughs> yeah, feel literally. like the options. Uh, oh! This is a fun one. This is, a, this is like my favorite one because we get to pick other guys uh, on other teams. Right, so how it works, we got to pick, if I pick, because I'm going first, a mm -hmm. position player, it's got to go position player. Uh, pitcher, you gotta go pitcher. This one's obvious, we were just talking about him. It's gonna be Juan Soto, man. I'm locking that I one know. in. I'm locking that in. It's like such a good shout. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I got what's Aaron Judge? I mean, he's Aaron fucking I mean, that's, judge, not another, right? that's not another bad option. That's the thing, too. right? It's literally Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge is off to kind of a cold start, but I mean, it's also one series and he's Aaron Judge, so. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, you guys, let me know. Okay, in the chat right now, I got two options. I got two options. It's either Jordan Alvarez yeah, or one. Aaron Judge. Where I mean, are we going? Those are pretty good elites right there. Where are we going, <laughs> folks? Judge or Jordan? What's Cat it going to be? Catherine's saying Altuve. That's not actually not terrible horrible. either. That's not awful yeah. either. Yeah. But, I mean, I feel like Jordan has the potential to, like, go yard on us three times or something, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know if, if Altuve and, necessarily has And that. he's going to be facing, um, granted, Yankees are also facing Bowden as well. Mm -hmm, uh, but mm -hmm. you got the left. Who's got, oh, Kikuchi's going to be going in the series against the Yankees. A little lefty action. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Crypt, Crypt tonight going Jordan. It's not a bad option. Yeah, bad option. It's, I feel like both of them are really good. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go Aaron Judge uh, just so we can we can really closely watch yeah. that Yankee series. We're gonna be live for that series twice, everybody. It'll be really interesting because it's like Juan Soto's directly in front of yeah. Aaron Judge, so yeah. it's like if he gets on, then like. And, and then Judge hits a man, and we're like, who, what right. does that mean? You know, right, it's like, right. so that'll be a fun one. I do agree, though, like, Jordan is pretty filthy. Uh, yeah. So that's definitely I a mean, good shit. Best player in baseball at this point, right? For real. All right, here we go. Last category. I'm going to be picking first in this one, guys. What are we going to get? What are we going to get? Stay away from the bonus player. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Oh, no, no too we're going to miss bad. it. OPS again. We got to do a re spin, re spin. All right. Come on. What are we picking? What are we picking? What are we picking? Come on. Stop. It's gonna be oh, oh yeah, right on thank it. Thank God, thank God. K per nine starters. Uh, honestly, I think at this point, yes, you're gonna have Kevin Gosman up against the Yankees. The offense looking good, but both offense pretty nasty. We pick your poison, right? Mm -hmm. K per nine. I feel like Gosman's looking pretty good right now. He's gonna get his case, so I gotta go Kevin Gosman. Okay, no, that's extremely reasonable. Um, uh. Uh, what am I gonna do here? Gosman's the clear selection. Well, you got Burrios. I know, I know, but is Burrios gonna go twice? He's gonna go once. Bowden will go twice this week. Oops, um, we'll go twice this week. Um, Uchi. No, no. If he has a better start. That's the thing. You're betting on people that have better starts. I'm going to mm. go with uh, yeah. La Makina. Let's and, go. Uh, we'll and, and feel good about it. I'm going to feel good about that one. Absolutely. As you should. Yeah. All right, guys. That's our wheel. Jose Burrios, the last one coming in here. 
Uh, let us know, guys, who you would pick in the chat. I feel like I had a pretty good spin there. I feel like I got all the guys. Other than probably well, OPS, you, you know, Vladdy would probably well, here's, here's the thing, man. I mean, like, you had a good spin. I got Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Aaron Judge, and, uh, and Jose Burrow. So <laughs> hey, it could go either way. Turner, Soto, Gosman. You know, these are all the elites. It you could know? go either way, guys. Uh, shout and thank you to everybody who has been tuning in to our Blue Jays Today show if you guys weren't aware we're going to be doing this every mm -hmm. single monday at noon so mark it in your mm -hmm. calendars and then every single friday depending on when the game yeah is, we so. got a little bit of a conflict in schedule in the early going one o'clock uh, game time on friday weird one Yankees. weird so one. weird so we'll kind of move things around we'll got let's keep you updated on our socials keep you updated on our community page on when we're going to be going live for that thank you so much for watching everybody and as always go, go jays go, go!